World War II movie review, The Thin Red Line by William Chen. Diamond on Tomorrow. Gabe Darsky. Nanisu. Today we're diving into The Thin Red Line, directed by Terrence Malick and released in 1998. This war film has a cast that includes Sean Penn, Adrian Brody, and Nick Nolte, among others. This movie is really good visually and pretty impressive. The sets and cinematography really capture the harsh environment during World War II. It's also very graphic. Any. Let's talk more about the Thin Red Line. The movie begins with American soldiers landing on an island called called Guadalcanal during World War II. They're fighting against Japanese soldiers who control the island. Among the soldiers, we meet Private Wit, who leaves his unit to live with local people on the island. Back with the soldiers, there's tension between officers about how to fight the battles. As they move through the jungle... The soldiers fight with ja- with the Japanese. Sometimes there's quiet time where they think about what's happening and how they feel about it. One big scene is when they attack a Japanese bunker. It's really intense with lots of action, but also you see the beauty of the jungle around them. In this movie, there are a lot of scenes like that showing beautiful landscapes like grass fields and waterfalls. Throughout the movie, we see how war affects different soldiers. Some are brave, some are scared, and some do things they regret. There are moments of heroism, but also moments where soldiers make tough choices. It's not always what's clear. It's not always clear what's right and wrong in war. The biggest battle happens when they attack the, a big Japanese position. Lots of soldiers are murdered, and it's shocking to see. Afterwards, they have to deal with the loss of their friends and fellow soldiers. Eventually, Private Wit comes back to his unit. He's learned a lot about life and friendship from people he met on the island. Overall, the Thin Red Line shows us war is tough and complicated. It's not just about fighting. It's also about how it changes people. And even though it's not the most exciting war movie, it makes you think and feel a lot about war. As for historical accuracy, well, it takes some shortcuts. While it captures the essence of the soldier experiences, it doesn't really adhere to historical events. It also doesn't go too much into detail about Guadalcanal's significance in the war. Yeah, I mean, it's more focused on the internal struggles of the characters rather than providing a documentary-like portrayal of the Battle of Guadalcanal. Yeah, it's more about the emotional and psychological toll of war rather than the specific details of the conflict. So in terms of accuracy, it's a bit hit or miss. All right, here are some photos from the movie. All right, overall assessment. Honestly, I found it to be just average. Sure, the cinematography was good, and certain scenes were eventful, but the pacing is too slow. And the philosophical stuff can feel like too much sometimes. Um, I kind of agree. It's not a bad movie, but it didn't leave a lasting impression on me. I found myself checking like how much time was left a few times, and it got it can get really boring. I think it's one of those movies that you appreciate more for its, like, artistic parts than its entertainment. It's definitely not for everyone. But if you're into slow-paced, contemplative war films, then you might enjoy it. But if you're looking for something more action-packed or historically accurate, you might want to look elsewhere. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank Thank you for watching. Thank you.